In a previous lesson, we discussed how there is no necessary relationship between the stoichiometric coefficients of a reaction and the reaction orders. We are now going to look at a case where there is such a necessary relationship, and then in future lessons we will extend that idea to account for cases where there is not. That special case is a single step reaction involving the collision of two reactants. For the moment, we will think about this happening in the gas phase, but we'll later extend the idea to solutions. Let's explore the example of carbon monoxide reacting with diatomic oxygen to form carbon dioxide and free oxygen. This reaction indeed happens by a single collision in the gas phase. Let's think a bit about how this happens and see what it tells us about what the rate law should be. So our rate of reaction, as usual, can be expressed in terms of the derivative of any of the reactants or products. We are almost certain to have a rate coefficient of some kind. The more carbon monoxide we have, the more collisions we will have, so the faster the rate will be. This means we need the concentration of CO to some power. And the same can be said of the other collision partner, O2. But what is the power? It's actually kind of easy to figure out. If we double the number of CO molecules, we double the collision rate. So our exponent needs to be 1. Same thing for the carbon monoxide. And there we have the rate law. Let's look at a second example. Two hydrogen iodide molecules reacting to form hydrogen gas and iodine gas. The same argument about the rate law applies. We have two HI molecules that need to collide to react. So we treat them separately in the rate law. But of course, those two concentrations are exactly the same thing so we can combine them. Notice the form of these two rate laws. The reactant concentrations are each present raised to the power of the stoichiometric coefficients. This is a general feature for reactions that happen through a single collision. In these two examples, the reactions are called bimolecular, since they each result from the collision of two molecules. Further, because they proceed through a single step only, they are called elementary reactions. Similarly, a reaction that proceeds by the simultaneous collision of three molecules is called termolecular, and the rate law follows the same pattern that we've already established. The coefficient for the nitrogen monoxide is 2, so the concentration of that species is squared in the rate law. The coefficient of oxygen is 1, so the concentration of that species is raised to the first power in the rate law. This would seem to imply that a first-order rate law would result from a unimolecular elementary reaction. This is in fact the case, but to understand this in terms of collision theory, we need to develop a few other ideas first, which we will do in an upcoming lesson. It is critical to keep in mind that this connection between the stoichiometric coefficients and the reaction order is only a necessary connection for elementary reactions, where the reaction proceeds as the result of a single collision. In a multi-step reaction, the stoichiometric coefficients do not determine the reaction order. Here's an example where the reaction of nitrogen dioxide with carbon monoxide ends up exchanging an oxygen atom. If it were a single step, then we would expect the rate to be first order in each of the reactants. But because it proceeds in a multi-step mechanism, the rate law might be different. It is important to understand what we can and cannot conclude here. If we know a reaction is an elementary reaction, then the reaction order is determined by the stoichiometric coefficients. If we experimentally see that the reaction order is different from the stoichiometric coefficients, then we know the reaction is multi-step. But we cannot go the other direction. A multi-step reaction might have the same rate law that it would have if the reaction were a single step. What about zeroth order reactions? Well, if it were an elementary reaction, then we would have no reactants, which doesn't make a lot of sense. That means all zeroth order reactions must be multi-step. 